Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to somewhere we've never been. Well, almost. It is still in Russia, but our scene is in the south, near the Georgia border, in the Caucasus Mountains a relatively undeveloped province by the name of cabardino Balkaria has rolling topography between steep rocky peaks, which are pastoral and picturesque. The modern descendants of the ancient people known as the Zikia have lived among these mountains since the 6th century BC. Common trees of this area include forests of pine, birch, and oak, which give way to alder, hazel, and rhododendron at higher elevations. Common animals here include the endangered western Caucasian tur, which is a wild sheep with broad, impressive horns. There are many small predators here, like weasels, foxes, and jackals. It looks like heaven on earth to a man who loves the mountains and wilderness, except one significant detail. There are lots of brown bears here. In the northern part of the province, fall had brought severe flooding. This corrupted or washed away important food resources bears needed to fatten up for winter, putting them in a dire situation, and consequently the people of the area as well. Hungry bears were reported across the province, pushing into municipal boundaries and forcing strained interactions with people, their livestock, and communities. On November 1, 2013, 80-year-old shepherd Yusuf Alkagirov was performing his farm chores the same way innumerable prior generations did before him, by walking the hillside and tending his sheep while they browsed the grasses and bushes of the meadows. The day in question was relatively normal, prior to Yusuf's sheep scattering into a field below him. Sheep are not the brightest of animals, and when one goes a certain direction, it's common that the others will follow them, so it didn't seem too far out of ordinary for Yusuf. This time, though, he could see that the sheep were not just following each other. They were fleeing, something which scared them. Yusuf is remarkably spry and energetic for an 80-year-old man. He's lived in these mountains in the same village with his wife and family for his entire life. His family have cultivated many plants on his farm, and the effort yielded dividends for them in the form of food and work. As Yusuf shuffled through a big raspberry patch to head off his wayward sheep, he saw his sheep below him. He barked his familiar commands to them, and they began to turn around and head back to their pasture. Yusuf slowly walked along with his sheep, but had a strange feeling he was being watched. He was familiar with his environment, and knew when something strange was in the air. He glanced around the raspberry patch and saw a gigantic brown bear crouched in a stalking position, clearly watching the shepherd approach it. He knew he couldn't run, as it might trigger the bear to chase him and kill him. Yusuf stared for seconds, which passed like hours, waiting for the bear to give away its motives. Perhaps if he froze and didn't react to the bear's watchful gaze, it would move on and leave him and his sheep alone. The bear and the man sized each other up for a few seconds before the bear clearly made up its mind. Yusuf watched helplessly as the bear's hind feet set in the soil and its front paws lifted in a long bound as it initiated its charge toward him. There were tens of sheep just below the man, but the bear's eyes were focused exclusively on Yusuf. His terror mounted as he watched the bear's paws reach out to bring it closer with each stride, its head floating statically, as the rest of its body churned with each powerful bound. The ground between him and the bear had sparse cover and a slight slope toward Yusuf. He knew the bear would be on him before he could turn around, so he braced himself to fight for his life. As the bear closed in on Yusuf, he quickly removed his jacket in an attempt to use it as a matador's capote. The bear was a mere few feet from Yusuf, with its massive jaws held wide open, waiting for any part of the man to clamp onto, when he wrapped his jacket around its head. Yusuf immediately began punching the bear in the face. He landed several strikes before the bear freed itself from his jacket. Now enraged, the bear spun toward him and drove its teeth deep into the tissues of his forearm. Yusuf could feel his arm bones cracking under the immense pressure and wrenching action of the bear's bite. He reached his free hand over and grabbed the bear's lower jaw. He twisted and pried the bear's jaws from his forearm, then quickly plunged his newly freed hand into his pocket. Yusuf carried a pocket knife everywhere he went as a tool. It was a small weapon, but better than nothing. 
He quickly flicked the blade of the knife open with his freed arm, while still holding onto the bear's lower jaw with the other. As Yusuf guided the blade toward the bear's head, it quickly swiped its massive paw across his hand holding the knife, knocking it from his grasp. Now face to face, the bear wrapped its massive arms around Yusuf and picked him up in a bear hug a few feet off the ground. Bears do this to make sure to hold the object of their aggression close for a deadly bite. Yusuf was a quick thinker. He realized the bear's head was now very close to his, and his arms were tangled up in the bear's grasp, so he used the only weapon he had at his disposal, his head. Yusuf pulled his head back a few inches and drove his forehead into the massive brown bear's nose as hard as he could. The bear was so surprised and apparently hurt by this blow that it immediately dropped him to the ground. The bear was now facing away from Yusuf at this point, and he was not done fighting it. He had one target within his reach and began kicking the bear. He kicked the bear in the crotch several times as the bear turned and spun, trying to get an angle on this human attacking him. Yusuf and the bear wrestled back and forth, with the man finding a way to prevent a fatal bite or swat several times. But that wouldn't last for too much longer. The bear again wrapped Yusuf up in a bear hug and lifted him a few feet off the ground. In the action and confusion of the fight, the bear used its arms to toss Yusuf off a 25-foot high cliff. Yusuf landed on the rocky ground at the bottom of the cliff and was knocked unconscious by the impact. The bear had apparently had enough of Yusuf and meandered off, leaving the injured and unconscious man to his fate at the bottom of the cliff. For seven hours, Yusuf lay unconscious, sprawled on the ground. He regained his consciousness and slowly recovered his balance. As he glanced around and his bearings came back to his mind, he began to wander in the direction of his home. As he stumbled and staggered his way toward his home, a group of villagers who had been sent out to find him approached. His wife had become worried after he missed dinner and asked them to go find him. Yusuf had suffered four broken ribs from the two bear hugs and the wrestling match. His left arm had a large bite wound and several smaller bite wounds and bruises. His wife was so happy that he lived, she went to work in the kitchen while he recovered for a few days in the hospital. She cooked him not one, but three of his favorite pies. Yusuf consumed all three pies in one sitting as a gluttonous celebration of life and his victory in hand-to-paw combat over the enormous brown bear. Yusuf stated that he got off easy, that if he had chickened out, the bear would have killed him. When asked about his bear fighting techniques, Yusuf said that it was a defensive technique his father had taught him. He was shown that a bear's nose is very sensitive, and if you hit them hard enough there, they might back down from attacking you. The villagers decided the bear was only playing with Yusuf and chose not to pursue and kill it. Wow, I can only hope that I'm as tough and as lively as Yusuf when I'm 80 years old. After reviewing the reported facts around this case, I'm left with a few questions for you. Do you think the bear was planning on killing and eating Yusuf, or was it just curious like the villagers thought? If it was hungry, why didn't the bear pursue the sheep? Do you think Yusuf actually hurt or injured the bear during the fight? I'm not sure what Yusuf's wife put in those pies, but they must be delicious for him to go through so much to get one. Your thoughts are important, so please post them in the comments section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country. I would like to thank our Patreons, David Veda Jr., Eleanor Hardy, Patricia hermanowski Toussaint, Angela Hammett, Marvin Alexander, Pam Stevens, Lulu 0000 Splash Log, Trevor Hannon, Jesse J. Juris, John L. Holly, Omar DeLeon, C.J. Avant, Kathy Ashuri, Diane Collier, Sandy Nielsen, Justin Land, Stephen Earl Smith, Stephen McLaughlin, A.J. Miller, Homa Masters, Ricky Helms, David Atkins, Shoulders, Repeat, Josh Paz, Gerald Purcell, Justin Appropriate, Christy Knapp, Dan Kemp, CCC, NC, Alan LaFramboise, Regina Gilreath, Ballard, Sheldon Lewis, Sheila Baker, Masij Kowalski, Carl Childers, Brandon Watts, Dion Lynch, Debbie Hannon, and HTD, 4 Life Biotoxic Beast, Gary Eric, Seal Rose, Victor Senku, Abhishek Bunia, Tracy Green, Young Gimps, 34 underscore Nina Allison, Heather Lee, Christian Darren Terrell, Matt Mochi Connor, Lavin, Stephen Wilkinson, Werner Voss, L. Justin Curry, Susan Holt, Butterfield, Sebastian Kelak, Brandon Wizard Wood, 
Wood, Nicole N. Angel Barnhill, Joey Pinter, Mauro Padano, Bubri TJ Schools, Katie V. Wright, Gary Highland, Cody Love, Katsy Murphy Andrews, Matt Bagney, Lindy Dawn, Alejandro Figueroa, Ian Romalor, Darcio Pacifico Rose, H. Lori McKay, Carrie Peters, Melissa Gottlieb, Megan Tren, Nathan P. Cole Rodriguez, Aurora, April Donovan, Ryan Cernicky, Chris Marler, Wayne Washington, Fluffy Feet, Cheyenne, Greg Schaefer, April Donovan, and Drone Adventures. Your support means the world to me.